famous football plays of California. It runs on. Its blue and gold uniforms are greeted with a thunderous roar from the world's mightiest rooting section. It's a rooting section famed everywhere, not only for its size and its fierce and loyal partisanship, but for the ingenuity and precision of its colorful card stunts. Here is pageantry, showmanship, lampooning its opponents, hailing and revering its own teams and leaders. Drawing from the crowd across the field, first a hearty laugh, and then in the next breath, a salvo of respectful applause. This is tradition, living tradition. Yes, these are the days that make memories, and pleasant memories they are. But as someone has said, the game is the thing. This is a reminder of great plays and of the men who made them. Unforgettable pages from California's history. But don't laugh now. That fellow may be, or your grandfather, or maybe. And this brings us to the individual plays with which the stars of yesterday and today have thrilled you on Saturday. The Southern California game of 1929 when Benny Lom and Roy Regals had their names in the Sunday papers. It's the second quarter of the game and it's Benny Lom who takes off around his own left end. A beautiful screen of interference forms out there in front of him. He works his way downfield, breaks into the clear, gets past Russ Saunders of the Trojans, and 85 yards downfield he goes, across yard line after yard line, to the touchdown, and California wins the ball game 15 to 7. California and St. Mary's in 1933, with the Gales heavily favored. It's California with a ball behind their own end zone. They get the kick away. It's out to the St. Mary's safety man, who takes it. Beasley of St. Mary's, who takes the kick, starts his run back, can't get away from both men, and finally is down. And so it's St. Mary's ball. They're deep in California territory, and it's Beasley of St. Mary's dropping back to pass. He gets the pass away over the head of the official, Intended for a receiver, but instead it's a California man, Gus Castro, who intercepts, cuts off wide to his left, and starts back down the field. Way down near his own goal line, he races up the field. The St. Mary's Gales out there trying to catch him. Almost due this time, but he twirls around, swivels on his way. Jim McCormick of California helps him out with a beautiful block. Jerry Easterbrook helped him with another one. And as he went down, it was over the goal line, and California had tied it up 13 to 13 on the strength of that 75-yard run. Then it was the Bears and the Trojans, USC, in 1933. This is the game with the play that didn't work. Southern California kicked off. The field was wet. It had rained the week before. And on that opening kickoff, before the fans were even in their seats, it was Chuck Stewart who received the ball for California. Cut sharply to his right. Dodged his way back and forth, up and down. Down the field, seemed to be getting away from all his pursuers. The officials themselves had to get out of the way, too. Will he make it? Will he make it? cried the stand. It seemed that he would. It seemed that possibly he would. And then suddenly, even as a Southern California man was on top of him, down he went without being touched. And although California kicked a field goal from there, they finally lost the game 6-3. to three. Arlie Williams had kicked a field goal early in the game. The three-point lead had held fast for three quarters. And then Alastiza had shot a long pass out to Norgard, putting Stanford in front, seven to three. California tried desperately to regain those lost points, to get back that lead, see if they could win the ball game. They got down to the Stanford four-yard line, and Floyd Blower, the Bears in the white outer shirts there, Floyd Blower shoots a pass out, hoping for that touchdown, but instead it's intercepted by Bones Hamilton of Stanford. Bones Hamilton starts down the right-hand side of the field. Dodging tacklers, getting past the 20-yard line, the 25, the 30, the 35, getting across his own 40-yard line, making it up to the 45 and to the 50, and on down into California territory, looking as though Stanford might lengthen the lead, but finally brought down on the California 40-yard line, and Stanford wins 7-3. to three. California and the Bruins of UCLA in 1935. UCLA has the ball. It's Funk of the Bruins who bobbles the ball, races back and falls on it to make his own recovery. It's fourth down and Funk drops back to kick. Larry Lutz, the California tackle, later an All-American, charges in, blocks the kick, 
McBurney of the Bruins, wearing the big number 96, has it for a moment, but it's Bard Stockton, the California guard, himself later an All-American, who finally gets it, goes over, and California wins 14 to 12. And then it's California against the Trojans of Southern California in 1936. This is the first glimpse we get in this film of the men who eventually were California's Thunder Team and Rose Bowl champions. At this point in the game, it's Sammy Chapman who takes a Trojan punt and carries it back to midfield before he's finally brought down. Now it's Vic Patari back measuring it Waiting to get that ball away in a pass, a long one. Down the field into a welder of players. It looks as though it's incomplete, but Perry Schwartz, the tennis player and football player, falls on it for the completion. And so the ball goes back to Vic Pateri for another pass. And again, he waits it. He was a cool customer, Vic was. Always ready, under fire, and there's the ball in the air. And complete to Sammy Chapman. Sammy ducks one Trojan, ducks another. Another one comes at him, but he gets away from all of them. Somehow manages to dodge them and into the end zone for California. Another play from the same game. The Trojans and the Bears. This time it's Mushy Pollock wearing number 14. Dropping back to get away a pass. And it's complete to Willard Dolman wearing the big number 22. Dolman starts downfield, caught in a tackle almost down, but before he is down, he laddles the ball, and it's big Bob Herwig. Maybe not graceful, but plenty determined. And Bob plugs his way downfield, managing to stay away from those tacklers into the end zone, and California wins by a score of 13 to 7. California and the Bruins of UCLA in 1936. Californians remember this game for one thing above all others, for a piece of some of the hardest, finest tackling they've ever seen. The Bruins are on their way to winning the ball game. They took it eventually, 17 to 6. It's their ball. It's a fake punt. Funk is back, but instead of kicking, he waits to get away a pass. It's in the air, high in the air, but reached and pulled down by Bill Spaulding, Jr. Cuts out to his right. Starts on his way downfield, and it's Johnny Meek, 235 pounds of him, who hits him a crushing blow. Rose Bowl game on January 1st, 1938. California champions of the Pacific Coast Conference, taking on powerful Alabama. The ball deep in Alabama territory. It's Sam Chapman on a reverse through a big hole, which you can plainly see. And then it's Batari cutting over to his own right side. Picking up another five valuable yards. Headed for that end zone. And they give it to Batari again, a real workhorse. And this time he starts out around his own right end, headed for that corner. And finally, in spite of all the tacklers, he makes it, and California wins 13 to nothing. In the big game of 1938, California with the ball, deep in Stanford territory. Again, we watch Vic Patari cutting in over that right guard and tackle spot, but brought down. The name Patari pops up again. He was a workhorse. This time, though, it's a pass. He's rushed, but he gets it away, and it's into the arms of Reginato. Out on the 10-yard line, somehow Reginato, with the help of a nice block, gets away from them. Into the end zone, and the only touchdown of the game, California winning six to nothing. Well, there have been lighter moments in California football history, and those of you who saw this Michigan game won't forget it. Not in a long time. California took a pretty bad drubbing in this game. It was 41 to nothing in favor of Michigan. And yet, for all of that, the fans didn't mind too much because they did watch Tommy Harmon. Here he is now wearing his famous 98, racing downfield, out running, out guessing. Out ducking, out maneuvering, just about out everything. On his way to one of the several touchdowns which he scored that day, the California safety man, hopelessly out of it, not a chance in the world of catching him. Tommy seems well on his way to that goal line as he crosses yard line after yard line. But just as he's about to get into the end zone for the touchdown, ha-ha, a 12th man on the field, the spectator in the white shirt, 
who's led away finally by the long arm of the law. Then in 1940, the game was Southern California. The Trojans expecting to win after the Michigan affair, but action comes fast in this game. As they pass from the California two-yard line, is Jimmy Jerkovich, who takes the ball in the end zone, streaks downfield past one yard line after the other. The 40, the 50, and the 20, and the 15, and the five, and so on, until eventually there he is after a 102-yard run with a California touchdown, and California wins 20 to seven. California takes on the Huskies of Washington in 1941. This is the game where they tried something new and made it work. It's California with the ball, Hank Zacharias back. Gets away a pass, caught up in the air by big John Ferguson, the end. Ferguson starts downfield, but laterals quickly, and the ball is clutched by big Bob Reinhardt, the All-American tackle. Reinhardt's on his way down. Will he make it? No, not this time. He's swarmed under by a whole horde of those Huskies. And down he goes. And so California tries again, and again it's Zacharias back there. But this time California's done something that Washington doesn't know about. They've pulled an end out of the line, brought him into the backfield. And they've made another man eligible to receive that pass. And as the ball gets away, a high looping pass, it comes down into the arms of none other than that same tackle, Bob Reinhardt, who takes it on about the 12-yard line and goes the rest of the way to score, California winning 13 to 6. We come to the big game of 1941. Stanford with Frankie Albert, very confident. But on the very first play of the game, in the first 30 seconds, it's little Al Darien of California who takes that ball, goes 70 yards downfield, skirting the sidelines and into the end zone for the first of California's touchdowns that afternoon. And a second play from that same game in 1941. This time, Stanford is kicking from behind its own goal line, and big Jack Herrero blasts through, blocks it. The ball is recovered by Bob Reinhardt for the California touchdown. And the final score then, California 16, Stanford nothing. 